that. English. Ready to go. Science. Hello. Welcome to Taskmaster. I am the Taskmaster. And this is our frenetic, fastidious producer and umpire, Katie Thomas. She can probably be trusted, but I am a little disappointed she didn't have any of the contestants bring me the customary gifts. Mm. Welcome to a display of perseverance, wits, confusion, tenacity, fascinating insights into the human condition, and birthday cheer for Adam. Katie, would you introduce Adam's birthday revelers? They are Ben Thomas, Jamie Brown, Patrick Wilson, Brendan Road, Rhett Beatty, and Paul Pariso. What is the first task? We asked them to spin something for as long as possible. They had five minutes to prepare and one attempt at spinning. Task one, make something spin for the longest period of time. You have five minutes to prepare and then one attempt at spinning. Your time starts now. We have a winner. Okay. Three, two, one. It's still spinning. All right. A wedding ring. That thing spins pretty good. Yeah, but the question is, do you know where it's located? Yeah, I know where it is. <laughs> There's also some quarters around here, and I'm pretty good at that. Um. All right. Well, hold on. Let me get the. Where is my wedding ring? Jack it out of here. That's not a good spin. Damn. That's too bad. It's not done spinning. Okay. I mean, it's basically done spinning. No, it's not. Oh, here it is. All right. For the longest amount of time. Here, we'll do some, we'll do some wealthy curls. Um, no wealthy curls. That's spinning pretty good. Go, go. I have to make something spin. Okay. So, let's see. How far does this go? You have 15 seconds. So that's gonna spin for like an hour. Let's see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spin for like an hour and 39 minutes. Uh, Go. <laughs> Is it for a minute or just as, as long, long as you can? Can I just turn on a fan? Am I coming with you? Oh boy. I'm gonna turn the record player on. Oh, that would have been a good idea. What do you think the time to beat will be? That's just how far you gotta go. 
Well, almost messed it up then. Oh, the arm is tiring. Call it. Call it. The scoring will be as normal from one to five, with five being coveted like the Nobel Prize. All were terrific, some more terrific than others. Five for the wick and ret, for using the least amount of effort for the maximum benefit, something we know Adam appreciates clearly. Four is awarded to Brendan, though this was very exhausting, mostly for him. He did it with a beer. Three to the other contestants, all very creative, but too labor intensive in comparison. Be happy no one got a one or two. Do we have a second task that might be more revealing of our recruits' intellectual proclivity? We do indeed. We asked them to write a limerick, starting with the line, there once was a chemist named Phil. They had five minutes. Here's how they got on. Task number two. Write the best limerick that starts with the line, there you was a young chemist called Phil. You have five minutes. Your time starts now. Now here's a dumb question. What is a limerick? Limerick. Which one is that again? How long is the limerick? Like four lines? There was a young chemist named Phil. What is a limerick? <laughs> Alright, read it out loud. There was a young chemist named Phil, and he had a passion for growing dill. He dipped his cucumber, the dill did a real number, and now his knob is a pickle. I don't know if it needs to rhyme, but close enough. <laughs> there was a young chemist called Phil. He thought he would take a pill. He swallowed it down with nary a frown, and then he had a boner that could kill. <laughs> there was a young chemist named Phil, who liked to go out in a chill. He took off his jacket and made a big racket and gave the old ladies a thrill. Wrap it for us. There was a young chemist called Phil. He had a heck of a problem with popping the pills, and he had no chill. <laughs> Everett, what do you think of Daddy's poem? That's right, Pop with the Trail. <laughs> okay, Rhett will now perform for us. Ready for this? There once was a chemist named Phil, who often was known to spill. He blew up his lab, but it wasn't so bad, and was fortunate enough not to be killed. There was a young chemist called, also, I totally forgot about the chemist part, so oh, this is not, this has nothing to do with being a chemist. Uh huh. There was a young chemist called Phil who liked to sit on a hill. One day he got drunk off liquor and stuff and rolled all the way down against his will. Katie, I am finding using integers for scoring to be unoriginal and uninspired. They don't convey any character. So for this task, we shall use movies. Movies? Yes. Let me assure you, this isn't T ball where everyone gets an award. Movies speak volumes as a score to convey my accurate impressions. I did think it was interesting that half of you invoked pornography into this literary task. That said, Ben gets a young Frankenstein, a veritable masterpiece of dialogue and delivered with glee. Heavy Metal, the adult animated sci-fi anthology film, is given to Wick and Brendan. Riley entertaining, but a little raunchy. We'll give Jamie the sought-after Tropic Thunder score. It's a veritable farce, but very popular. Rhett gets the Galaxy Quest Jason Nesmith score. It had movie props and involved serious science. Paul gets a Space Jam score for unexpected playfulness with the genre. It was either that or the Galaxy Quest Guy Fleet score. I'm not sure how to rank these. All will be revealed. What mischievous little game do we have for task three? Alrighty. Uh, for task three, they had to draw a scientific diagram. 
They had 10 minutes. The most informative diagram wins. Yeah, ready? Task three. Draw a scientific diagram. Most informative diagram wins. You have 10 minutes. Your time starts now. What do I do? <laughs> I don't know. It's a biochem textbook. Well, we could do, we could do a networking diagram. Yeah, let's do a networking diagram. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a diagram of UDP networking. Let's see. And I'm sure uh, whatever I draw, I can't wait for Adam uh, to tell me how it's actually done because he does this stuff. Time in computers one and two, we're sending to IP address 192.168.0.10. And we've got our two UDP ports that are open. We're using Nginx. And then we're gonna say this one's dot 15 and this one's dot 20. All right, this is it. How to send UDP ports through a load balancer to other servers behind the load balancer. Boom. Or how about biosynthesis of a heme? Oh, sure. We all know what hemes are. Yeah. Sure, we all do. Alpha <laughs> so we got a carboxyl group here. Boop, 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 boop. Boop with a nitrate at the end. Action is 8H2O. Mm. All right, so that's a solid. All right, ice cube, it, it's frozen. It's a solid ice cube. All right. That's my main. And then, what ha what happens to the ice cubes when it gets warm? Uh, it gets hot. Yeah, and what does it turn into? <laughs> Ice cubes turn into grass. <laughs> and then what happens to the water when it gets really hot? Turns back into an ice cube. Just kidding. It turns into vapor. It turns into a gas. So, solid, liquid, gas. There is our scientific diagram. We're going to do the end of the world, but you know what? We're going to be much more uplifting about this one. Makes it. Porpho Villanogen. Okay. Oh, it's, uh... Is it tight? This is the body according to a toddler. <laughs> so up here, uh, this is where snot comes from. It goes everywhere. <laughs> this part of the sleeve will always be wet. Don't know how. Uh, the human hand has anywhere from 2 to 11 teen fingers. Uh, this is where pants go. Pants are heavily optional. <laughs> then we lose the nitrates. Sorry, ammonium. Ammonia. It's 4 NH, NH4 pluses. That's ammonia, right? We call archaeology science. <laughs> I'm gonna call it science. Okay. History of the world, I guess. As it relates to the seven wonders of the ancient world. Only one still around is the pyramids. You can't see this one. You can't see that one. You can see this in the British Museum. I'll put where they ended up. How much time I got? Hmm. Might wanna check that. <laughs> Looks like.
This is the stuff that carries your, uh, or the, 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 that carries, uh, oxygen. Uh-huh. And carbon dioxide to and from your, uh. Oh. For scoring this task, we shall use Baskin Robbins ice cream flavors. Because I'm getting tired and could use some ice cream. Katie? It's good to be the taskmaster. This is melted. You thought I'd be bothered by this, but I'm not. I'll enjoy this in a minute. Brendan has a score of wild and reckless shirt. It's a clever diagram and creative premise, perhaps even interesting, but the fear may have put reckless thoughts in his head since archeology span can be considered both a social science and a branch of the humanities. Jamie scored daiquiri ice. It's light, refreshing, and satiating in the midst of a turbulent world. He even made it into a delicious teachable moment. Gold medal ribbon flavor is the score for Ben. An amazing use of techno babble and numbers to accompany the diagram, making it seem like he might have known what he was doing. Red score is icing on the cake. What an impressive use of graph paper, a straight edge, and engineering graphics. The diagram even has a legend. I am a Twitter. Made me long for my college days. And he did this all without talking, just like when you eat great ice cream. Wick's score is Rocky Road. It's a mixed up concoction full of illegible, entertaining bits. But it does satisfy the sweet tooth. I could eat it every day. Paul scored no sugar added caramel truffle. Just like his diagram, it takes some serious biochemistry and a fighting spirit to manufacture this mouthwatering flavor without any sugar. By the way, he will have to explain the red splotch on the figure. Do we have a fourth task? We do. We asked them to get the sweatiest. They had five minutes and visibly sweatiest person wins. Get the sweatiest? <laughs> visibly sweatiest person wins? It's the winter. <laughs> it's like I'm like a wrestler or something. Yeah. Maybe we should have put a garbage bag on you. Doing great, honey. This is really good when you're sick. Run around, run around! Daddy! 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 <laughs> you look pretty sweaty. Okay, <laughs> good job, honey. Should we take off your Does shirt? Count? We should take off your shirt. Who do you think the sweatiest guy will be? Adam Thomas. Yep. Let's see the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too good. I'm not. I'm too in shape. Uh huh. Your nose is a little shiny. Here you go. Let me give him your nose shine. Yeah. Wes, you want to do yoga? Yeah. That's not sweat inducing. Unless we're doing the hot yoga. Do you want me to turn the hair dryer on? Yeah. Oh, because I'm super sweaty. <laughs> not that I just threw water on myself, too. Oh, gosh. Oh, I got it. All right. Everett! Wow! We're, we're running in the backyard. <laughs> 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 Wait, 
No, you gotta get. I'm perspiring. Hello. Hello. <sighs> 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 Whew, gotta pass out. I'm gonna hurt, hurt myself for you, Adam. I would usually just put on cops, but I don't think I have a copy of cops. This is a Trinidadian scorpion pepper sauce. Yeah, this see? is darker. Yeah, look at those pips. Yeah, we got some in there. Oh. I don't know if my head's sweated. For scoring this task, we shall use characters from the sitcom Parks and Recreation. Paul, a score of Ben Wyatt. Desire to do good, seriousness, not a bad fashion sense, and dry wit. His comment about Adam being the sweatiest was spot on. Well done. Ben, Ron Swanson is the score. Steadfast, determined, and goal-oriented. Get rid of your bureaucracy and get out of the way. Let me do my job. Brendan, Tammy Swanson, one or two, but mostly in a good way, is his score. He obviously will do whatever it takes to get the prize. Jamie, a score of Leslie Nope for fascinating and playful determination in the face of all odds. Recall, she was the star of the show. Rhett, Jerry Gergeshe is the captivating score for him. That's Gergish, like an itch when you itch a mosquito bite. That's nonsense. Nonetheless, he is my favorite character in Much Misunderstood. He might be outwardly and assuming, but he has lots of amazing hidden talents. Some quite large, as I understand. He has it all figured out behind the scenes playing everyone like a fiddle. As for Wick, could it be any other score than Tom Haverford? Mischievous and cocky. We saw the face splash with water. Our celebrants are probably hoping this torture will end and they can go to some sort of a party. Don't tell me. Is there a fifth task? There is. To wish Adam a happy birthday. Here's the fifth task. All right, the fifth and final task. Wish Adam a happy birthday. Your time starts now. Happy birthday, Adam. I love you, man. Just thinking back to like everything we've been through and your first beer with me. Man, a lot of good memories. <laughs> Miss you, buddy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Adam. I hope you have a wonderful one uh, and send more tasks because they were fun, though. <laughs> Maybe we don't film them next time because there is a lot of interruptions. <laughs> but love you, brother. Happy birthday. Aww. Happy birthday, Adam. You're you're the best. I love you. You're a great friend. And uh, I don't know. Just happy happy that uh that we get to spend some time together. Still, even uh after middle school, high school, all that. So, happy birthday, bud. Yay! Happy birthday, Adam. Nice, buddy. Happy birthday, Adam. Love you, buddy. Bye. Happy birthday, Adam! Woo! A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T. -A 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 -A. I've known Adam since, I want to say, fifth grade. And we played savage basketball together. And Who was better? Well, Adam was better. He was going to go to Duke and then go pro. <laughs> Um, we became good friends soon, soon thereafter. Um, played a lot of basketball together. Played Savage together. We, uh, we played at Hammond Pool together. Yeah, yeah, we've been friends for a long time. It's been a great journey, buddy. Here's so many more years. Woo! Woo! Adam, my guy. Happy birthday to literally the nicest friend that I have. 
I'm so glad you're around. I'm so glad we're doing this. She found a great one in Katie for organizing this, but seriously, you two like one of the best couples we know. Um, sweetest guy, most parentally approved I can think of. We can unpack that later. Um, can't wait to hang out with you, man. Who saw that coming? What I take from it is that Adam is a really fortunate, almost middle-aged guy. What reverence they've all displayed for his getting older. I think we have to award them all a Hogwarts special award for services to the school, for at least pretending to be interested in going through all this. That is quite the resume builder. So who won? What are the scores? I'm not sure it's obvious, but I will read them back. Paul, three, Space Jam, no sugar added caramel truffle, Ben Wyatt. Rhett, five, Galaxy Quest, icing on the cake, Jerry Gergich. Jamie, three, Tropic Thunder, Daiquiri Ice, Leslie Note. Ben, three, Young Frankenstein, Gold Medal Ribbon, Ron Swanson. Wick, five, Heavy Metal, Rocky Road, Tom Haverford. And Brendan, four, Heavy Metal, Wild and Reckless Sherbert, Tammy Swanson, one or two. And of course, everyone gets the Hogwarts Special Award for services to the school. Now, isn't that more satisfying than a bunch of numbers? I am impressed. Katie, anything else to add? The suspense has reached its zenith. Everyone would be getting loads of marks if points were involved, but they weren't. The point of the tasks was for Adam, so he won. To think otherwise says something a little unsettling about your spoiled and privileged character. As is said at the conclusion of It's a Wonderful Life, no man is a failure who has friends. And if you're not too happy with that score, or it's too mushy or corny, remember what Mom T says in Attitude Zaps, copies available on the quest. Get over it. But today's a birthday. I will wish Adam a happy birthday, but I know there are others that wish to do the same. Adieu. Happy birthday, Adam from me, Mark Watson, one of the original Taskmaster crew. Well, actually not one of the original ones. Ages ago, though, series five. Nowhere near one of the original, except actually, I was Alex's friend and I was one of the people that did the trial run when it wasn't even on TV, when it was just in real life. So in a sense, I'm more original than any of these guys. Okay, good, that's cleared up. Uh, I believe you're doing a, a sort of, well, you're, you've got like a Taskmaster themed episode, a bespoke Taskmaster episode, uh, courtesy of Katie Thomas, your wife, for your birthday. And um, I just want to wish you a very happy birthday. I hope the Taskmaster themed fun is excellent. Uh, and uh, I, um, this is on a more serious note, Katie says give Greg his trousers back. The trousers went back to him a long time ago, as you're well aware. I'd also like to take this opportunity to say that I should have got more points for the trousers even though uh, Ed Gamble did quite a lot of the work, because I thought that was pretty brave, really. And I don't think Greg should be allowed to mark people down just because he's crossed that he's lost his trousers. But he's the taskmaster, and he has to be obeyed. Today, though, Adam, you are the... Well, you're not exactly the taskmaster, are you? I think Katie set the tasks. Anyway, you're in taskmaster world. Enjoy your birthday. May it be a very happy one. From me... And Alex. And Greg. I mean, they don't know about this, so I'm just throwing any names I want in. Nick? Yes?